As you can see, I'm back from my travels. So in this week's episode, I'm checking out what's new and cool in Microsoft 365 for November and December 2025. This is a good one. Learn with Andy Malone. Today's video is brought to you by AFI.ai, securing your cloud data with AI-powered data protection solutions that can be set up in minutes for 24-7 protection and zero configuration. Visit AFI.ai now. Hello everyone, nice to see you on a warm welcome to the channel. I really do appreciate you uh, dropping by. On today's episode, I'm checking out what's new and cool in Microsoft 365 as well as Entra ID. There's been a lot of conferences and I know I've been attending a load of them recently. Uh, so it's really nice to be back here in the studio. So there's been a lot of announcements coming out from Microsoft and I thought in this episode we'll take some time and we'll talk about them. Now uh, I just like to mention by the way and I get sent books now and again and um, I did a session a few weeks ago on Windows Server 2025. If you haven't seen that, then check out that there. Um, but this is a really nice book all about administering Windows Server 2025. Uh, this comes from Packet and it's from Jordan Krauss. Great book, by the way. If you, if you really want to learn Windows Server 2025, this is really a nice in-depth guide, so check it out. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, of course, we'd love you to come on board. So bump that subscribe button up there and ring that bell. It'll be great to have you. And if you've got any questions about this or in fact, any of my sessions, as always, get those down below. So I think without any further jibber jabber, let's jump in and take a look at these some cool new announcements for Microsoft 365 and Entra ID. Check it out. So the first of the new features for November 2025 is in Microsoft Exchange and it's called Online Auto Archiving. And this is currently in public preview. Now in terms of costs and so on, when things go into public preview, we never really know the costs. But bearing in mind that Microsoft normally charge for compute, for storage, and for networking. So that said, you know, the, uh, I suspect it may come at a cost eventually. Anyway, to switch this on, uh, pretty simple. Uh, you need to have, first of all, an Exchange Online Plan 2, which is an E3 or an E5 license. And to enable it for an individual user, as you can see, you can either use PowerShell or you can use the UI. I'll show you the UI in a moment, but enable dash ma uh, mailbox command. And you can see it's the auto expanding archive option. To enable it for all of your users, you just basically set it at the organizational level and you can see uh, it would uh, then encompass all of your users there. Um, in terms of verifying it, then again, you can use the get dash command. So this is get dash organization config. And also you can see you can enable and disable it by using the true or the false switch. So with that said, let's take a look at the UI. Okay, so to do this, I simply come into Microsoft 365, go into the admin portal down here, and I'm just going to simply click onto Microsoft Exchange. Now, just to show you that there is documentation, auto archiving in Microsoft Exchange online, and it tells you exactly how it works. And it doesn't give any details about the plans or the costs yet, but I'm sure that will eventually come knowing Microsoft. So here in Microsoft Exchange, I'm just simply going to go into the mailboxes and in the mailboxes here, I've got recipients. And if I go into an individual one, for example, Adele, um, if I click into her mailbox, um, actually, just before I do that, you'll notice that we have this archive status here and that that archive status is actually active. So again, if I just click into her mailbox and you can see here, we've got all the details of, uh, of Adele's mailbox here, her usage and so on. If I click onto the others tab, you can see we have the mailbox archiving and the fact is it's actually enabled. Now, as you can see, I can click into this and you can see the uh, archive status, it's enabled. And again, the archive usage here. Now do notice here, 
Um, additional storage is a premium feature. So again, watch out for that. Now we've always been able to kind of do an in-place archive, but the fact that we can now auto archive things via PowerShell is going to be very, very useful. So again, watch out. There's going to be a couple of changes here, I'm sure, but uh, again, very, very interesting nonetheless. And the number two announcement from Microsoft Ignite, of course, was the AI co-pilots and security co-pilot. There are some big changes coming for Microsoft 365, notably E3 and E5 customers um, will no longer need to pay any additional fees for this. To be honest, it, this is a little bit sneaky because Microsoft really, it was already kind of free already. The one thing that you did have to pay for was what we call the SCUs, the security compute unit. So the more you use, the more you pay. But the nice thing now is they're including up to 400 SCUs per month for every 1000 user licenses up to a maximum of 10,000 SCUs per month. So that's great news. In addition, the integration is also announced, Microsoft announced 12 new agents directly into the work flows of security, uh, teams using Microsoft Defender, Entra, Intune, and Microsoft Purview. And these capabilities will be built into all of the OSs to really kind of autonomize and really simplify security. And also things like conditional access policies, things like access review optimization, and so on. So bearing in mind that these, you may not have this in your portal yet, but they're currently being rolled out. So keep your eyes peeled for that. So with 12 agents inbound, let's take a look at a few of these. First of all, then is the phishing triage agent. Now, one of the issues that security people have and support people have is with often with phishing emails, users are a little bit trigger happy to report a phishing email and often genuine emails can get bypassed easily here. So what this does is it learns user behavior and uh, you just can go in and you can investigate this just so much easier and you can also refine uh, the alerts as well so it's not so sensitive and more than that uh, it definitely reduces it and you can also see the whole process step by step so that's really good on the subject of alerts, the alert triage agent, again, really, really useful, um, especially for things like data loss prevention policies or insider risk management, Microsoft Purview. So what this basically does is you can go in and you can configure data loss prevention policies to be a lot more accurate. Now, obviously, with so much traffic, you know, a security agent can feel so kind of overwhelmed, whereas a lot of this can be completely automated and you can also customize all of this as well. So you can, you know, make this as relevant as you want. So it just make, makes the, the whole process uh, considerably faster than that. And you can see here, you can set up the various policies so it's simple to use. So the next one circles around Entra ID and specifically access reviews. Now, access reviews can be very very tricky, especially for the people who are actually carrying out the access reviews. And people, the problem is that you can get access to apps or access to resources far longer than you should. So the access review agent is absolutely fantastic. You can set up the triggers and it integrates with things like new user, if there's new users coming in or new apps coming in or, you know, just kind of unusual behavior. It really speeds things up there. Also, it allows you much faster, allows you to respond much faster to access reviews as well. So that's a really nice feature um, that's coming from uh, Microsoft there. So again, uh, the whole thing can be customized, which rocks. Okay, still in identity, and one of my favorites is the conditional access optimization agent. And the optimization agent is fantastic because as you know, as admins, new users, new apps, new things come online all the time. And often conditional access policies don't get updated, things get missed, 
and you suddenly you find yourself having real problems. So this is where the optimization can come in. It can make a bunch of recommendations and with a single click, it can enforce those changes as well. So this is a really nice feature and it's really scalable, easy to use. And this is definitely one of the one of the agents that I would definitely use. OK, finally, we've got the concept of building your own agent. So, you know, if there's an agent there that you don't see that's doing what you want it to do, hell, why not go in and actually create your own? So this is the Microsoft Security Copilot build your own agent service. So you can come in here, you can build your agent using very, very simple tools. Or if you're more experienced, of course, you can use tools like Visual Studio and you can build your own apps. You can publish those apps alongside the regular agents and again, makes it so simple to use. Fantastic. Now on the subject of co-pilots, one of the other big changes from Microsoft Ignite was the pricing and specifically for small businesses. So arriving 1st of December, 2025, Microsoft 365 Copilot will launch. This is designed for organizations with up to 300 users and it provides enterprise grade AI capabilities, pretty much the same capabilities that enterprise customers are paying $30 a month for. Of course, this will be change varying where you're, uh, where you're situated in the world, of course. And it's going to come in at $21 per user per month. Um, the obviously caveat here is that's on top of whatever you're paying for your Microsoft 365 license at the moment. Basically, the seat limit, of course, for business users, so business premium, so on, for example, is up to 300 users. And in terms of availability, you can purchase this product either as a standalone or as a bundled product, um, either with business premium and so on. So what does it provide? It provides seamless integrations with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, which of course many customers were missing from the kind of the free versions, Outlook and OneNote. I love the Teams integration, by the way, the fact that you can summarize meetings, that absolutely rocks. Also, you'll get a uniformed co-pilot app that combines both chat, search apps, and custom agents that you'll have access to. And it eliminates the context switching uh, of risks of consumer AI tools. So in other words, you know, rather than your users going off using ChatGPT or uh, some other third party one, the idea is to keep you all in one place, therefore reducing any kind of security risks. So in terms of features, it's going to be the key thing is it's grounded in your organization's internal data. So in other words, it doesn't learn from your data. It doesn't share your data with anyone else, which is awesome. It provides you personalized insights on your emails, documents, and meetings. So there's nothing worse than having a meeting with somebody and you've got 30 emails. It can summarize the whole conversation, which rocks and really will save an awful lot of time. You've also got the ability to build your own custom agents as well with minimal coding. So that means zero coding, just with a couple of clicks, you can create your own uh, AI based agents. And you'll also get role-based AI experiences. So for example, if you're a sales department, HR, marketing, it will fully integrate with any third-party apps that you might have. So in terms of enterprise grade security, I've already mentioned earlier in this presentation that uh, you have it accessed into the likes of uh, Entra ID and you're going to have access to that security co-pilot there. You've got built in privacy and compliance. Data is not used uh, to train any of Microsoft's uh, foundational models and governance through Microsoft 365 security and compliance tools is all there. Um, enhanced protections are available for the Microsoft Purview suite. So if you're using Microsoft Purview, again, business premium, you're going to have access to quite a lot of that stuff. So that, uh, as I said, really rocks. Okay, what about some of the security changes that are coming to Microsoft 365 and Enter ID? Well, unsurprisingly, Microsoft now requires admins uh, to consent for all third-party applications that are accessing Teams and Exchange APIs. So if you're a developer, you're adding in those third-party apps, 
then they're closing this common attack vector for phishing and shadow IT, which is really welcomed, actually. Also, I've done sessions on this in the past. Um, uh, Entra ID now supports uh, FIDO2 keys. FIDO1 keys, by the way, are the physical hardware keys, and Microsoft are recommending that you give these to administrators, whereas FIDO pass keys, the, we now have these things called profiles, which means that these uh, pass keys now live in, for example, your uh, Apple key vault or your Azure key vault rather and your Apple keychain, things like that so that they can move in from device to device, which is really nice. So basically it's, it's expanding the passwordless sign-in options. We've kind of had it for a little while, but they're now uh, obviously formalizing it. Other security features include data loss prevention policies, and they now extend through the network layer in uh, uh, Global Secure Access, Microsoft's uh, networking tool that comes out of Entra ID and it's part of the Entra suite if you don't have it. Microsoft Purview also integrates inside a risk management with data uh, security investigations. So this now allows security admins to launch pre-scoped investigations directly from an insider risk management case, which is kind of an obvious thing. And that's, I'm surprised they've taken so long actually to do that. And it's also nice to see that Microsoft Teams has been enhanced uh, with phishing protection uh, and it now displays warnings for malicious URLs and attachments in both chats and channels. And that comes courtesy of safe attachments and safe links, which we have had for some time. So it's really nice to see that now formally included in the security offerings. Also, the Files tab in Teams, you know, Microsoft loves to change things. It's now being renamed to Shared. This aggregates all files and links shared in channel conversations. Again, providing this kind of centralized collaboration history. Okay, so finally then, what about some licensing changes? Well, Microsoft licensing, we all know, uh, 365 and 365 Enterprise Suites, Teams is once again now available globally. So there was um, a case uh, at a year, year and a half ago with the European Union that dictated that Teams had to be separated. This is no longer the case. So Teams will now be bundled with Microsoft 365, and this reverses a prior compliance move uh, in Europe. Standalone with Teams, or standalone Teams, or with no Teams uh, SKUs, will still be available uh, with the slight price difference, and a goal also with the E3 and E5 without Teams if you wanted that. Enterprise agreement customers pricing has been overhauled, and Microsoft are eliminating tiered discounts on online services. So all commercial, all commercial customers will now pay level A, which in other words is public list pricing at renewal with mid-range large organizations facing six, a 6 to 12% price uh, hike uh, in 2026. So there you have it, checking out some of the new features in Microsoft 365 and Entra ID for November 2025. Whew, I tell you, it's busy out there just now, isn't it? Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed the session. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. It does help the channel. And if you wanted to come on board, you know what to do. Bump that button up there and come and sign up with us. That's it for this time. Thanks so much again. I'll see you next time. Take care.